offended if you don't call it Independence Day. But uh, anyway, it uh, should be fun. We were thinking about doing fireworks, but then we have a big firework show downtown, so I was like, well, it's, <laughs> we're not going to outdo that, especially with Oregon's little fountains, like the only thing that you can use. So. Um, but uh, hopefully everybody has plans, and we do have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, my son would like prayer for everybody, and he'd like to wish everyone a happy 4th of July. Uh, Alyssa asked for prayer for her uh, son's father. Uh, I don't know his name. What is his name? Uh, Max is dead. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then she had some health concerns too, uh, so continue prayers for her. And then my son, again, would like prayer for me, I guess. Ha 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 ha, is what he says. So. But I'll take all the prayer I can get. Any other prayer requests? Anything else that we can pray for? Sweet and no? Talitha. Prayers for Talitha. Yes. She has surgery coming up. She's scared. Now we should pray for uh, Melissa. See if travels as well. I think she's in like Pendleton or something like that. But, uh, she left yesterday. But anyway. Uh, all right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, just everything that you have done and are doing for us. God, I pray, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way in our service today. Pray for uh, the needs that are here, God. We pray for Alyssa, God, that you would have your hand upon her as she travels, Lord, all those that may be traveling right now. Pray for Mike and Barbara, God, that you touch their body, help them to get over their sickness. God, we pray for Max's dad, Lord, that you would uh, help him prepare for being out of the stakes for work. Pray that you keep him safe during that time. Pray for Alyssa's health, God, that you would touch her body, Lord, and just help them figure out what's going on. And uh, God, I pray that you would help prepare our hearts and minds, Lord, for what you want to do in this place. We pray that you keep uh, all of us safe as we celebrate tonight, God. And just pray that there wouldn't be any accidents among any of us. And uh, we just ask that you move in this place in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just real quickly, a uh, quick announcement. We do have family, we call it a family conference, even though because of COVID restrictions, we're not really doing it like we normally would, but um, there are these cards over there and they have the live streaming information. Uh, it's July 14th through the 16th. Um, uh, Brother Hart, Art Hodges is um, a very uh, esteemed teacher very deep, knows a lot about like the Greek and stuff. And then uh, Brother Morgan is used a lot in prophecy, he talks about spiritual gifts quite a bit, so uh, definitely that, since they're live stream, I'm guessing you can watch them on demand, but I'd highly encourage, and I'll probably mention it after the actual services. We'll be there in person, Lord uh, willing, and uh, it's one of my favorite events of the year. I'm really sad that we all can't go down together. Uh, the other thing to kind of keep on your radar, which I'll uh, direct you to my wife for more information on this, but we do have a women's conference uh, every year around October. 14th through the 16th. Right. October 14th through the 16th. I've never been to a women's conference, but I hear they're really good. And uh, uh, anyway, if we'll probably be renting a room for the church. So, uh, but anyway, talk to her for more details on that.
Where's my hand? This half. Oh, my pretty slide is there. 
I work so hard on those slides. Not really. I'm teasing. I just let PowerPoint do all the work. I have a little design feature. I just click that and it goes, here's some options. And I go, that looks good. Uh, you have to put it on a picture of the slides. I don't like formatting. It's so cheap. Oh, it looks a little dark on the screen. There it is. All right. Now we're good to go. Well, thank you for being here on a holiday weekend, which is typically the uh, time where a lot of people miss. So. Appreciate that. My son's doing such an awesome job on the drums. Love it. And my wife is always doing a good job. Trying to follow me, because I'm all over the place. So. And... Uh, I'm envious. I'm hoping someday we can have a piano player because I can't drink water, play and sing at the same time. It's really hard. So. Um, but I'm thankful for what God has given us. And I'm definitely going to preach on the theme of the holiday today. Um, this has been said many, many times, but I think it has just a little bit different context when it comes to the church. Uh, turn your attention to three different uh, uh, verses, three different chapters and verses, whatever, three different locations, three different somethings, they're all on the screen. You'd like to say, see if I'm in the good book. First one's going to be John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you. Hallelujah. Tell you, I just I got some just something in my craw that says we need more people abiding in his word, not their own opinion. Hallelujah. Abiding in his word, not their own will. Um, Jesus said, if you believe in me as the scriptures have said, I always point that out. It's not good enough just to believe in Jesus in your construct of your imagination, but rather we have to live, believe in Jesus as the scripture has said. It's so important. Uh, John chapter 8 verse 36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And Luke 15, 7 says this, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. And I want to preach to you this thought today. Let Freedom reign. Feel the Holy Ghost. God help me. Lord, as I preach your word to these people, God, those that might listen afterwards or maybe right now online, I pray, God, that you would uh, just anoint the words that come out of my mouth, Lord. I pray, God, that you would guide me, lead me. Lord, this is not a construct of me or really anything to do with me and everything to do with your word and the power of your spirit, God, and our need for that in our lives. I pray. Lord, that you do a mighty work, God. Help us to, to look at our life differently. Look at our calling differently. Look at our participation in this church differently, God. Surely, time is running out, God. And, uh, we need to be about your business. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It was July 4, 1776, that Congress approved the Declaration of Independence. That's why we celebrate on the 4th. A lot of people say we should celebrate on the 2nd of July or celebrate on the 2nd of August because the actual document was drafted on the 2nd of July uh, and uh, but it wasn't actually printed until the 4th uh, and then August 2nd is when everybody if I'm remembering correctly had officially assigned the paperwork so some people are like we should celebrate on the 4th I don't know what camp that you're in but according to the government, we celebrate on the 4th, and uh, many of us probably have the day off tomorrow as a result of that. I'm very thankful uh, for that. Uh, the document stated, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among them, these are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And through this idea, the most powerful and wealthy nation in the known world exists. Although they, today we remember 
the original decree, we celebrate the text that started the process for the country that we live in. And although many of us still hold the belief that all men are created equal and endowed by God for certain inalienable rights, which among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and although this declaration separated us from the oppression of a corrupt government, there are still many that aren't treated equal. There are millions that don't get the opportunity of life, and there are still more that are not truly free because they do not and don't consequently, consequently know what happiness is. But it isn't our government that we have to blame, although that's who most people want to blame. It's not racism or any other form of social injustice. It is sin that causes men and women to act upon their lusts and selfish desires. It causes greed in every evil thing. Hebrews 12.1 says, it easily ensnares us. Romans 6.23 says it brings death. And the longer that we're in it, the more things it kills. Sin brings death to relationships. It brings death to to honesty, it brings death to things that are pure, death to our self-esteem, death to goodness, death to kindness, death to trust, death to growth, death to love, and death to freedom. True freedom is not one with bombs and guns. It is not created with the formation of a new government structure. We spend so much time blaming each other Blaming a political party and blaming the system and some blame oppressing agenda when all along we're forgetting who we should really be fighting. Ephesians 6 12 says, For principality, or for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. But as long as we continue to hate one another, fight one another, blame one another, we will never see true freedom. Because it is not a political party that will set us free. It isn't a movement or a government that can set us free. Quite frankly, the more energy that we spend upon having harsh feelings towards other people, I won't say hate, but being frustrated, being angry, the less energy we have to fight the true war on our knees. The only thing that can set us free is the truth. And the truth is 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. The truth is John 3, 16, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The truth is 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. That is the truth. Today we celebrate our freedom with rockets and huge explosions because for so many that is the sound of freedom. War is the sound of freedom. The sound of war is that men fought to secure what they felt like was liberty. But true freedom is not the sound of men killing one another, but rather the sound made when people are delivered from sin. The reign of freedom is made when the chemically addicted put away their substances and they decide to get hooked on Jesus. The reign of freedom is made when the young woman decides to let her baby live. The reign of freedom is made when people decide to turn away from their destructive lifestyles and turn towards the cross. The reign of freedom is made when a young person stops hurting themselves and finds healing in the loving arms of a savior. The, the, the ring of freedom is made when people stop focusing on the color of someone's skin and starts focusing on the conduct of their character. The ring of freedom is made, hallelujah, when people put down the weapons of revenge and begin to forgive. The ring of freedom is made when someone is baptized in the name of 
Jesus for the remission of sins, the ring of freedom. His name, when a husband and wife decide to honor their vows and keep working on things, the ring of freedom is named. When someone speaks in tongues, when the, uh, the first evidence of them receiving the Holy Spirit, the ring of freedom is named. When we stop fighting against each other and we start fighting for one another, the ring of freedom is named. When we stop looking at men for our salvation and we turn our eyes to God, the author and finisher of our faith. So let freedom ring in St. Helens. Let the sound of the delivered push back the sounds of darkness. My God, I want to see these chairs filled with those that are willing to turn their lives to you, church. It's not just good enough to go about our day to day. People are lost. People are going to hell. And we may be few, but we may be their only hope. So let freedom ring in St. Helens. Let freedom ring in Columbia County. As we try to plant a church in every city in this county. I know it doesn't look like much right now. But I still believe that God has a purpose and plan for each and every one of us. And someday the floodgate of revival will open up. There are so many that have walked away from Christ that live in this city. There are so many that are lost that are begging for God. Something to deliver them from the oppression that they are under. And it's up for you and I to go and spread the word. And let them know about the love of God. And as they begin to come into this place. To begin to start at the churches in other cities. Let freedom ring in St. Helens. Let freedom ring in Columbia County. Let freedom ring in Oregon. In our whole nation and our whole world. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring within ourselves. Man, I feel, I hope this doesn't sound, I hope this comes out and it is sincerely a spirit of love, but, but I feel like the spirit speaking within ourselves, that we are limiting the potential of Christ in our lives, that, that we have segmented God into different areas, but we don't allow him to bleed over into others. And whatever the reason is, I do not know, but it's time that we let freedom ring. We do not need to be ashamed in front of our family that we serve the Lord. We don't have to be ashamed among our friends if we get a little overzealous for Jesus. We shouldn't be ashamed on the workplace as we try to hide and make sure that no one knows because we don't want to have the drama. I say that everything that they have done, that they will do, they've already done. And we might as well let them know that Jesus lives, that freedom is something that they can have. Yes, amen. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring in our families. I'm so just heartbroken over the state of our families. So many that reject the Lord. So many that seem to want to have nothing to do with them. Why is it so weird for us to come together in this place to them? I do not know. But we don't fight against against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and power. We got to stop trying to convince them to come and start bringing down spiritual strongholds. We have to stop trying to come up with some clever way to invite them and instead call down the power of God upon this city if they come running to the church and to the altar. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring in our churches. Far too many serve under false doctrine, under oppressive leaders. Listen, we can't serve a religion. We can't serve a man. We can't serve a church. Listen, I'm not here preaching this message because 
Uh, I, you know, someone told me to do this. I'm here preaching this message, trying to build his kingdom, not my own kingdom, not your kingdom, not nobody else's kingdom. I'm not here because I have to be. I'm here because I want to be. I want every ounce of God that I can have. No, that doesn't mean every morning I wake up saying, I'm so excited to get to church. Sometimes my flesh is tired. Sometimes there's the opportunity for me to do something else. But I tell you what, I want to be in the presence of God. I want to get everything that I can get. And if I got to get this old stinking flesh out of bed, and I got to get into the Word to prepare a message, and I got to put in time on the piano and sing and do everything, I'm going to do it. Why? Because I want Jesus more than anything in this world. I want to be in his presence on every opportunity that I can get. It may be, we might be able to watch online. It's not the same online. I want to be together with the precious saints of the God most high. And here, freedom reign. I fear that in this on-demand world, you know, used to be you wanted to watch your favorite TV show. You had to set the timer, right? You had to be there, right? We had TV guides. What would we have TV guides for? Make sure we didn't miss a show. Oh, it comes on Wednesday at 7. We were willing to cancel all our plans. Or, or if people wanted to spend time with us, they had to come to us. Or we went to that. We were going to watch a show because if you missed an episode, it wasn't like you could just go back. You know, later that day or that week and see what happened. And so we would schedule our time in order to see these things. But I fear that as things have become more on demand, we make God on demand. God is available when we need him to be. We don't feel the importance to be in church. And I'm not, I'm, I, I hope you feel like, I'm not trying to get on you. You're here, right? But we don't have, we don't feel the importance to get there. Why? Because we'll just watch it a little later online. We don't have to get in the Word anymore because we can listen to this podcast. We don't have to get in prayer anymore because we got a little devotional that we play on the way to work. God's on demand. We plus, plus, Press play and we did. We expect him to go. This isn't a 12 step program. This isn't, I wouldn't even call this a lifestyle. This is our life. So let freedom reign in our lives. And we can't make the decisions for our family, but I pray to God. That I have everything that I can be in Christ. I tell you, there's just something. You ever been around someone and you want kind of what they have? Oh God, let that be in our lives. Yeah, we may justify as getting upset and angry sometimes and doing all this stuff. But I tell you, the reason why most people don't come to church is because of us. And I pray every day that God would crucify this flesh. Because I don't want to show anybody but the love of God. I want to show them the love of Christ. I don't want to show them judgment and disdain. I pray to God that my spirit doesn't rise up with anger when someone hurts me or offends me or hits me. But instead I can be humble and just give, turn the other cheek. And if they want to hit that one, they can hit that one too. Oh, well, we're not supposed to be in that. Well, I don't know what led Jesus to the cross then. Because he died, he was crucified, he was beaten. He could have called down a whole host of angels. But instead, he decided to stay there. He decided to let those that were crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, God in the highest. He allowed those same people that just days before were worshiping him to cry out crucify him crucify him crucify him and if a perfect loving savior could allow himself to be put in that position how can I justify my bad attitude how can I justify the terrible words that spew from my mouth now now let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Paul would say, and such were some of you. You know, some of us need to be delivered from our past. 
for what we used to glorify ourselves in. Oh yeah, we could tell someone off and we, we were strong and we were all these things. Now, God needs to deliver us from all that. I don't want to be strong in the flesh. I don't want to be someone that no one can penetrate. No, 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 no. No, I, I want to be weak. I want my flesh to be weak. Uh, his grace is sufficient for us. For in our weakness, His grace is made perfect. But we spend so much time trying to be strong. We spend so much try, time trying to be the peg that holds everything together. And we just sometimes need to surrender to God and say, God, I am weak. And I can't do it on my own. Sometimes it's okay for other people to see that too. How are they going to know that Jesus is in our life if we're always taking the credit for holding everything together? I feel like that's almost, I'm almost prophesying to us right now. I feel like the spirit, the spiritual gifts are at work in this place right now as I'm beginning to speak these words because we've been showing one side to, to our family and another side to God. You think I'm weak? I don't care. There's no, no good thing in me. I try. I want to be the best I can for Jesus, but even my righteousness is as filthy rags. Because I'm not going to sit here and cast all these judgments upon all these other people. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that those that are spiritual should restore such a one when they're caught in a fall, considering yourself also. What he's saying is, is that if you had the same situation, if you had the same set of circumstances, if you were in that position, you might not handle it any better than that person right there. And so instead of being there to pick up the stone and cast judgment, let's be there with the hand to say, I'm here to pick you up. And if they hit the hand away, put the hand out again and say, I'm here to pick you up. Why? Because everyone is worth it. He didn't just die for those that were ready to receive. He didn't just die for those that would be easy on us. He died for everybody. I just feel like we, we have this checklist. You know, yeah, no, they're not ready. To hear about Jesus. They're not ready for me to invite them to church. They're not ready for me to say that I can pray for them. And, and the whole time, the whole time, God is just trying to break through, saying, No, that's exactly what they need. And that's exactly why I put you there in their life. But God, it happened before, and bad things happened, and they turned away and all of this. Listen, we gotta stop living in the past, and we need to live in the power of the Spirit. It blows my mind sometimes how quickly Jesus said to dismiss those who didn't receive the word. He said if you go to a city and they don't receive it, just dust, just wipe the dust off of your feet and go somewhere else. In this city alone, there are 13,000 people. And we're afraid so often that we might offend one or two. I'm not saying preach, you know, stick your finger in their face and preach the word to them. I'm just saying we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. We shouldn't sit there and hide it. We shouldn't sit there and try to pretend like it doesn't exist. And we need to be strong in our faith and stand up and say, I'm proud of what I stand for. And I'm proud of who he is. And I'm proud of what he's done in my life. And there is no good thing in me. All good things are because of him. Let freedom reign. Let our churches be a place of love. I understand. The scripture says this. Judgment will start in the house of the Lord. We're not just going to be... You know, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to say it's okay for people to live in their sin. No. But we can be patient. We can be kind. We can allow people to grow. 
People grow in different ways. Yeah. We can be there to help someone up instead of kick them while they're down. Yeah. Do people disappoint you? Absolutely they do. Do you? Sometimes I get so frustrated because when I wanted the Lord, I wanted the Lord. It wasn't this battle. It wasn't all these plans. It was, okay, I believe, and I've gone 130 miles, and I haven't looked back since. But not everybody's like that. So let freedom ring in our churches. As we love one another, where we give them a place to grow. You know what? <laughs> we should believe in people. When everybody else is out there saying they're not going to make it and because of this and because of that, we should be going, but God, hallelujah, but God, I believe that they'll make it. I believe that they'll, I believe that they'll get a hold of God someday. I tell you, I, I'm so happy. I don't care where they are in their lives when they come into these pews because my mind's going, today might be the day. This message might be the message. That prayer might be the prayer that changes their whole life. Don't give up. Don't quit. Let freedom ring. Yes. I still so vividly remember searching for some sort of purpose in my life. I was so tired of the many disappointing things of this world. I'm thankful it didn't take drugs to put me on the right road. I'm thankful it didn't take a bunch of broken relationships to put me on the right road. I'm not saying for those that have that that God did anything less for them. I'm just saying there's some drama that comes with that stuff. And I'm thankful that I have to go through it. It's not that God saved me better than anybody else. I'm thankful for all that. God doing that to them too. But I didn't live this existence where I feel like I hit rock bottom, right? I lost all my friends and lost all my family. A lot of people meet God in that place. I was just a kid searching for some purpose. 15-year-old with this understanding of some void in my life that there had to be something more. And I wasn't satisfied. The good grades were nice. The Achievements in sports, yeah, they, they were okay, but, but there was still something missing. I eventually found hope in Jesus and would eventually find purpose in Him. And from that day on, I have never felt that emptiness that plagued me. I have never felt, felt and I never do feel now that void. That something was missing. Now, it's not that life has been super easy since that day. It wasn't that. I haven't gone through some trials. There were some lonely nights and, and desperate moments where I was crying out to God. And I wondered, I wondered if he was still there. But I tell you, I never felt alone. I don't know really how to explain that. When you can wonder if God is still there but not feel alone. But I tell you, that emptiness, that void, I have never felt since. Even in the midst of confusion and trials, that that purpose that God has given me has been there since the day that I decided to turn my life to Him. When I allowed Jesus to come into my life, there was freedom. There was liberty that I experienced and still experience even years after that moment. That is greater than anything that this country could give me and so strong that no man could take away. Listen, if your happiness is tied in possessions, if it's tied in a bigger house, if it's tied in a better car, if it's tied in people and friends and family, then you will never be happy because there will always be disappoint you. But if your happiness comes from being in the will of God and having a right relationship with Him, there is no man, there is no principality or power, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, amen. Let freedom reign. True freedom is being free from sin. True freedom is living a life for Christ. True freedom 
is letting go of our desires and following his. <laughs> Man, those people who, oh, you go to church, churches are legalistic, they're judgmental, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you, you have, I don't have to do anything. Sound, I hope this doesn't sound bad, but I don't make a dollar off of this church. I'm not saying it's bad for someone to draw their income. I hope someday that we have a big enough church and you know we can put into this full time. There are often times where I just feel like I'm just so inadequate because just keeping it all together and, and, and trying to, you know, you know, how do you do family and full work full time and then outreach and Bible studies and prayer and it's just it's a lot. So I hope there's a day. Where I can dedicate a little bit more time to this. It's not that that's wrong. But I'm just saying. It's not a paycheck that keeps me coming to this pulpit every week. It surely isn't the benefits. <laughs> I tell you. I don't know what it is. And I, if you need something to pray about. We need to pray against the stronghold. That is over the city. About people who are Pentecostal. Not even just necessarily the truth, but there's just a stigma of anybody who believes in sign miracles and wonders or anybody who speaks in tongues. And there's just this negative, just this great negative force that works against in the minds of people. I have no idea what they think we do in this place. I just feel like we kind of let God have his way and worship him. And it's wonderful, but in the minds of people, they're deceived. We have yet to see someone speak in tongues for the first time in our church. Why do you say that's significant? Because I believe that there is a stronghold fighting against us and that there would be a breakthrough if that happened. It hasn't happened in our church. Who is it? I prayed through. I thought that was a church. Conference. One's not enough. Yeah, I don't understand why people can receive the revelation of Jesus' name baptism but not get baptized. We are fighting a war against freedom. It has nothing to do about Democratic and Republican. Has nothing to do with social justice. Listen, we can get out there and campaign all we want, but if people are still going to hell, we're not doing any good. You know what brings about change? Jesus. You know what's going to turn the tide in our society? Jesus. Got all those people getting on Facebook and posting all this stuff, and you're right and you're wrong. You're not going to change their mind. But God can change their mind. True freedom is being free from sin. And my prayer is that we can all know what true freedom looks like. Because there's nothing more liberating than truth. And I tell you, it grieves me that there are things in our life that we haven't given to God yet. There are still hurts and pains and situations and people that we have held on to. And they hinder us from having the liberty that we could have. At some point, freedom has to bring in our life. And we can't just give God a piece, but we got to give God everything. No matter how ugly or how dirty or how disturbing or how hurtful it was. No matter how deserving. There's a song that says, oh, when 
needless, needless sin we bear. Talks about burdens that we carry. All we have to do is go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe this whole message was geared for us to have freedom in our own life. Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you have true freedom today or do you have partial freedom?
come into this church, we are the hope of this county and city. You can say, oh, there's a lot of churches out there.